Bow. Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk him up. Chris Taylor. What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Matt Moreno. And we've, we've got some news. Obviously, the lockout's restricting some player stuff, but there are still some coaching moves going on. The Mets are attempting to fill out their staff, and the Dodgers getting a little bit of good news, according to John Heyman. Clayton McCullough, the Dodgers' first base coach, was a guy who interviewed for the Mets' managerial job, did not receive it, but apparently interviewed well enough to where they were interested in him potentially becoming their bench coach. But John Heyman had this to say, quote, while Dodgers first base coach Clayton McCullough has been a consideration for the Mets bench coach, the Mets believe he won't leave L.A. to coach elsewhere. Mets loved his manager interview, but no, they know he's consistently turned down coaching jobs elsewhere. Mets still working on bench job. McCullough has been with the Dodgers since 2015. He oversaw the alternate site in 2020, became first base coach a year ago. So, I mean, it seems like good news, right? This close to the regular season and you get to keep your coaching staff intact, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's obviously a positive for the Dodgers at bare minimum for continuity's sake. Uh, I think also Clayton McCullough is somebody who's been uh, highly valued within the organization. Dave Roberts has spoken highly of him. Andrew Friedman has spoken highly of him. Uh, I'm a little surprised. You know, I, We did a video, obviously, a few weeks back when it was reported that Bob Guerin and Clayton McCullough were yeah. interviewing with the Mets to possibly <clears throat> become, excuse me, become their manager. And I think we were both surprised that Clayton McCullough that Clayton McCullough could potentially make yeah. that jump because you don't really see, you know, somebody going from first base coach directly to manager. Uh, so obviously the Mets ended up going with Buck Showalter, which was kind of expected all along. Then once it came out that they still had interest in McCullough for their bench coach position, I thought, okay, like that's a little bit more realistic, I guess, if you want to put it that way. And I frankly sort of expected him to probably leave because it's a promotion yeah. for him. It's another opportunity uh, on the bench coach side with the Dodgers, you know, Bob Guerin is firmly <laughs> entrenched in that position. I know he's interviewed uh, for a couple of managerial openings over the past few years, but he hasn't gone anywhere. So it was a little surprising to see that, you know, the Mets have now shifted their focus elsewhere. Yeah, it's interesting, L like you said, because first base coach to bench coach is a promotion. Bench coach seems to be the, the manager in waiting role. And for a guy like McCullough, who's kind of bounced around a little bit as far as jobs within the organization, like we said, he's just spent one year as a first base coach. So it's not like he's been on the major league staff right. for, for a number of years here. Um, it is a little bit surprising. Now, you and I were talking beforehand. There's a funny story connected to this job because the Padres actually had their quality control coach was asked to be interviewed. Basically, uh, the Mets asked if they could interview the quality control coach, uh, Ryan Flaherty, for their bench coach job. The Padres said no to, the, to this request. And, um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? It's kind of funny. Like, you never hear this. It's a promotion, but it, it's sort of a fascinating situation where the Padres are like, no, actually, we're good. We don't have to say yes to this, and we're not going to. Yeah, it caught me by surprise, uh, only because you don't really see yeah. it. Like, I think teams definitely understand that, you know, it's part of the business, right? Like, you get a good coach in your organization, and maybe he works up the ranks a little bit, and at some point, other teams come calling and want to offer them a different role than what they right. have. The Dodgers have gone through it over the past several years. Andrew Friedman has joked about it. Uh, he said, you know, every offseason I kind of become at my own <laughs> HR department because we're fielding so many uh, interview requests from other teams. And to the best of my knowledge, the Dodgers haven't prevented anybody from interviewing, much less, you know, potentially moving on. And so when I saw the Padres did that, I kind of laughed a little bit. I thought, you know, of course, <laughs> the Padres would be the team that does it. And there was some of that banter on social media. But, you know, I think you uh, you brought up a great point when before the show, we started recording that I think Flaherty has a pretty uh, lucrative or at least a different, a little bit of a unique contract that the Padres yeah. gave him some security. So, you know, maybe they kind of look at it as we invested in you early on. And so now we're going to kind of keep you in the organization. Yeah. I think the Padres rationale actually highlights how critical this is for the Dodgers that McCullough isn't going anywhere. Basically the Padres said, Hey, like spring training now lockout aside is supposed to start pitchers and catchers are supposed to report in like a month. And so we can't be losing one of our key coaching positions like four weeks before that, you know, if, if you wanted to interview this guy, Three months ago, maybe it's a different story. We have time to replace him, yada, yada, yada. 
But no. And and by the way, other people have noted, like like I said, he's had a he Flaherty, I believe, has a three year contract, which I guess is very unique for somebody in that position. And so I, I kind of understand it from the Padres role because it's like, yeah, we can't replace this guy four weeks in the middle of a lockout, you know. And so that highlights to me why this is such good news for the Dodgers that McCullough is likely, as Heyman said, to stay put because the Dodgers would be in the same position. Now, like the Dodgers farm system, you assume that they have coaches everywhere that are amazing and they've got guys that they could plug in. But the fact that the coaching staff remains intact, that they're all going to be at the same positions, that they're not going to have to scramble to find a new first base coach, I think is only good news for the Dodgers. And so, again, Clayton McCullough uh, was rumored to be a candidate for the Mets bench coach, but John Heyman reporting that that he's expected to stay with the Dodgers. And uh, even though he would be taking a promotion if they were offered, if he were offered this job, he's going to stick with the Dodgers. So good news there. Let us know what you think below. I mean, I know the first base coach isn't a glamorous position, but it, it does matter. It's one of the guys you see on the field. So good news there for the Dodgers. That's Matt Moreno. My name's Jeff Spiegel. Check out Dodger Blue 1958 everywhere on social media, dodgerblue.com. And please ring the notification bell below, subscribe, tell your friends, and we will see you next time. We'll